Well, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Doder, and I'll be talking about modifying your home for accessibility purposes today. I will be going pretty fast in this presentation, packing in a lot of info, a lot of uh, extra web links and such. Please don't feel like you have to take notes. Both the slides and the video here will be available for TMA uh, uh, for download on the TMA website later, so you don't have to keep up now. We'll be discussing home modifications for about a half hour, then I'm gonna get up and we'll tour around my house and um, see the uh, a remodel that I'm doing in the middle of a remodel for accessibility purposes. Please do type your questions as we go along. After the live tour, I'll sit down at my computer again and go through those questions, try to save about 10 minutes uh, there at the end for questions. A little bit about me. I have a rare form of hereditary IBM that I actually inherited from my father, who you see here in this picture. That's Jeff Doder. He was diagnosed in 1993 when TMA started, and, um, and then this picture was taken a few years before he uh, passed away in 2017. Uh, when he did pass, he was uh, severely progressed in his disease, a uh, permanent quadriplegic, permanently uh, confined to the uh, the power chair that you see there, and he was in pretty bad shape. So unfortunately, I do have experience with advanced stages of myositis-related uh, diseases. I myself am a retired Air Force officer and instructor pilot. I do have a little bit of a background in construction. I uh, My hobby is actually to build private home movie theaters uh, in, in houses, and um, a little bit of experience there. Uh, here in, during the COVID crisis, I was actually overseas in India when this all hit, and uh, unfortunately, my company directed me to travel during that time. I got real sick at the uh, the end of the uh, the travel, and unfortunately, my disease has uh, significantly progressed uh, with that. And so I've had a rapid acceleration of my uh, degeneration, which is prompting me to do my own home modifications here much earlier than I uh, anticipated. I'm also the interim administrator now for uh, for TMA while we look for a new executive director. So please do direct any and all questions that you have, comments, feedback to me, and uh, I'd like to address those. A few disclaimers. I am not a construction professional nor a social worker. I do not intend to endorse uh, any products or uh, companies here just because uh, I'm talking about them. I'll be focusing on home modifications themselves and not individual tools and uh, gadgets so much. We do have other videos uh, this weekend that um, have, uh, have talked about that, other presentations. And we do have other videos saved in the TMA Video Vault on our website that do address more of the tools to use for myositis patients. I want to emphasize that everybody does have different needs, finances, location that they live, house challenges, everything that makes your modifications different. So as we go through this presentation, please do not be discouraged if you see something you say, Chris, that's just not feasible to me. That does not apply to me. You are not speaking my language. Because I'm trying to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit for everybody here. Um, and, uh, and so please hang with me and be patient. A little bit about the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA that you uh, hear so much about. Uh, do remember, that only applies to commercial settings. So in your home, when you're going for a modification, yes, do listen to the ADA standard, what it is. That's a great place to start. But in the end, if you decide to put in a modification in your home that is not ADA compliant, that's up to you. There's not going to be nobody banging on your door. Why are you not in compliance with such and such? That does not apply to your house. The overall goal of doing home adaptations is to make your home safe and barrier-free usable for you to age in place, continue living in your own home with your own means. If you don't want to go to an assisted living facility yet, then let's figure out a way for you to stay in your own house and safely uh, live your life. There are a few approaches that you can take to a home modification. Which one you choose is up to you. First up, you can move. Straight up, that might be the most practical thing to do. If you live in a five-story private house, well, you might need to move if you're not able to put in an elevator or that just may not be uh, practical. 
Another approach you can take is, you know what? It's my house. I don't care what anybody thinks, what it looks like. I'm just going to make it functional for me. And it doesn't matter uh, what anybody else thinks. If that's approach that you want to take, more power to you. You're, it's your house and you decide. You could also say, I really want my home to look nice. I don't want it to be an obvious handicapped home. This is actually an approach that I have chosen to take myself. I want it to be functional and usable for me, but I don't want it to shout, a handicapped person lives here, whether it's from the front curb or whether you're inside the home. I don't want it to look like a, a sterile home hospital. I'd like it to uh, stay looking what I think is, is classy. Whatever you decide to do, whatever approach you want to take, I do want to emphasize it is your home. You decide what you want to do. You are empowered to do that. Yes, listen to the experts. Yes, listen to the physical therapists and the social workers that will give you advice on which uh, things are going to be useful to you and give you the most value for your money. But in the end, you decide which approach you want to take. I have to emphasize, make changes to your home before you need them. If you wait until you have a functional loss of your body and then you start modifications, you're going to have to find a contractor, get on that contractor schedule, go through the paperwork, arrange your finances, do the actual project, which will uh, take time. All during that whole process, you'll be sitting at your house with the functional inability to do something, whether it's stairs or, or whatever. So don't wait until it's too late. Stay a little bit ahead of your disease, anticipate what you think will be, uh, you'll be needing next, and then make that change early before you need it. What is the number one danger to, danger to myositis patients? Yes, it is falling. So we're not going to put a whole bunch of kindergarten uh, nerf mats on the floor so if we fall, we don't get hurt. Instead, the approach we're going to take is how do we prevent that falling? So in order to do that, first, we're going to remove the tripping hazards around that, uh, that house. I'm sorry, but that does mean all those Turkish rugs that are beautiful that you spend a lot of money for on the floor, eventually those will have to come up. Maybe not at first, but yes, that uh, the rug on the floor and peeling up just a little bit, that is going to create a tripping hazard for your toe to trip on and uh, you could to come crashing down to the floor and, uh, and get hurt. Remove the clutter from around the home in walkways in hallways you want to make sure it's nice and open so whether you're stumbling around pushing a walker or whatever that it's nice and smooth for you now whether you are walking on your uh, own two feet in ass unassisted or sliding pushing a walker or even if you're in a power chair rolling unfortunately for any of those carpet will uh, inhibit your motions and become something to catch your foot and trip on. So if you talk to any advanced myositis patients and their care partners, you'll hear over and over again, we had to remove the carpet and put in something uh, to so that uh, we could uh, slide around, move the, our Hoyer lift without it catching on the uh, the carpet. Yes, lips and thresholds. Okay, so around your home, there will be some doorways that will have a little bit of threshold, a little bit of a lip at the bottom. A lot of these will be exterior doors that go from inside to outside. Now, for an able-bodied person, when they walk through the doorway, it's just natural without thinking that person will lift up their, their feet. So to an able-bodied person, thresholds, not a problem. To myositis patient, problem with the foot drop that we get your toe will eventually catch on that lip on that threshold create a tripping hazard for you and you'll go tumbling over or if you're in the power chair it's going to be a rough ride going over that uh, that uh, bump so eliminate as many of those as you can now you see in this picture one solution you can put this little mini ramp a little rubber threshold tiny little mini ramp so that you can roll up to the uh, the threshold any little lips and thresholds that remain, you do want to make sure that they are one quarter of an inch high or less. 
Okay, if you do reside, decide to replace your flooring, here are your uh, uh, several options for making some sort of solid surface flooring, generally arranged in order of cost, from uh, least expensive to the most expensive. Which one you use is up to you according to your uh, to your budget, where you can get the materials from, and a big one is what the subfloor is underneath the flooring that you're pulling up, whether it's carpet or, or whatever, whatever is underneath there. And you may not even know that until you start pulling it up, and that can uh, greatly change the, uh, the cost of your project. Just like in the picture here, sometimes you can put down some of these flooring solutions on top of whatever's there. It, uh, it uh, just depends. It also depends on uh, what source of heating in your home. Up here in Alaska, a lot of us have in-floor radiant heat, which changes the type of uh, flooring that uh, you would want to use. Okay, stairs. Now, even if you live in a one-story ranch home in the middle of Kansas, there's a good chance that somewhere in your house there's going to be one or more stairs, whether it's the front porch, into the garage, or something like that. So, we're going to talk about how to deal with them. First, if you put in ramps. Okay, the ADA standard for ramps. For every one inch that you raise in height or the rise up a stair, for every one inch, then ADA standard is the uh, ramp needs to be one foot in length per inch of height, rise versus run. Now the standard American stair is seven and a half inches high. What it is in the rest of the world, I'm sorry, I, it, it, it varies and uh, I'm not sure, but us Americans for some reason insist on uh, uh, um, relying on these uh, inches and feet, so I'm sorry, the rest of the world. Okay, so as an example, if you have four standard height American stairs with a total of 30 inches of height, then the ADA standard would be to use a 30 foot long ramp, and that's pretty uh, pretty long. Now, do you have to use a 30 foot long ramp? Could you use 25 feet? Yes. Could you use a 20 foot ramp for those 30 inches? Yes, you could. It's just gonna be a little bit steeper than the ADA standard if you choose to do that. So realize if you're on your feet and you're walking up the uh, that ramp, that's gonna be a little bit tougher to do. And if you have a uh, increased uh, steepness, uh, do make sure that any um, powered chair that you have has enough power and strength to drive up that uh, that incline. If you can get to the ADA standard or even longer, then that is going to make it just a little bit more easy for, for you to use. There's the cost for ramps installed generally. Yes, you can think about doing a uh, do-it-yourself installation. If you do, you know somebody who can do uh, woodworking like that, just please make sure that it is solid and safe. All right, if you are gonna do one or more floors, like two-story house uh, and to get up a, a flight of stairs, a stair lift is going to be your most cost-effective option. Starting there on the left side, you can see that if you have a straight stair lift, st a straight flight of stairs, just going straight up, then the stair lift can be fairly cost-effective, uh, only um, about uh, $3,000 or so, depending on the option that you put in. Now, if you have curved stairs, or if it goes up, up to a landing, makes a 180 degree turn and then comes back up again, you still can put in a stair lift. Uh, stair lifts nowadays can uh, uh, be installed in just about any flight of stairs. It's just going to cost more money the more twists and turns and landings that you have for those stairs. On the right side, you'll see that isn't a solution of the assist step from a, a company uh, that uh, is more cost effective, will cost less money, but you can see uh, with that that you do still have to have the ability to uh, walk up the stairs with uh, hand assistance. Um, there is not a seat to, uh, to sit in. Okay, <clears throat> next level up, uh, a platform lift. that You may, may have seen these in movie theaters and commercial buildings um, where generally it's to raise just a few feet. We're not talking in general for this, you doing one or more stories, uh, one, one or more uh, flights of stairs. Um, and so these are less expensive than a full-on elevator and uh, can be very useful. So some people put these on their front porch instead of putting a big long ramp or um, in their garage to get down from the main level of the home just a few feet into the garage. Many garages are uh, sunken like that. 
Okay, the next level up is to go on a full-on elevator, and everybody loves the uh, idea of this. Everybody loves this video. Thank you to Chris and Jim Borfel for uh, uh, providing this. This was a... Uh, um, elevator lift they chose to put in their home. They couldn't find a better place to put this. So they actually put this uh, going up into a upstairs bedroom. Now the video is going to uh, loop here and you can see the top of that elevator there. When the elevator is on the lower level, that elevator roof becomes a solid platform floor that you can actually walk on on the upper level. They said they could paid about $28,000 for this, which is a lot of money, but that is pretty good for elevators, actually. Elevators can be extremely expensive. Down there, that last little bullet, uh, Bob Villa on uh, his TV show, This Old House, did show a, a low-cost elevator. If you want to look at that, you can. It was only $15,000, which uh, could work. I'm not sure if I would use that for a... Um, Myositis patient with a powered chair, but you could look into that. Okay, now for myositis patients in advanced uh, stages, most of you know you probably will have to have a Hoyer lift, particularly for IBM patients with the uh, the steady state of uh, uh, progression. Now I'm a big guy, and so this probably is in my future unless we can find a cure for myositis and those related uh, diseases. So uh, when your care partner is no longer able to lift your body weight, um, this is um, it can become extremely useful. Just like you see in the video there, it can be a mobile unit uh, to put some into a, into a bear, I'm sorry, into a bed or a uh, bathtub, a swimming pool, into a shower, um, anything like that. Now in the bottom left picture there, you can see you can also put a ceiling track that is fixed and uh, uh, install that. So when somebody is installed uh, and, and lifted up into the, uh, the sling there, you can push that person anywhere you want in the house that that uh, ceiling track is designed to go. All right, let's start talking about bathrooms. One of the biggest uh, things there that uh, needs modification is the shower. So, um, just like you see in the picture there, uh, you do want non-slip flooring, and if you put in smaller tiles, the smaller the tile means more grout in between the tiles, which means there's more grout to grip your feet and provide a non-slip surface. Yes, you're definitely going to want that handheld shower wand. As we lose the ability and our mobility to move our body into the water stream, you want that handheld shower wand so you or your care partner can move the water to you instead and around your body. One thought, you may want to put control knobs for the shower outside the shower so your care partner can manipulate that without them having to get in the shower with you and get wet. For the rest of these, how about we watch a uh, video that uh, talks about this. Many of you know Mary Jane and Dick DeLauder. Big kudos to them for everything they have done in the, uh, in the myositis community. Mary Jane made a, a video she called Handicapped with Style, where she talked about modifi modifying your home and keep it looking good. Dick, I'd like you to pan down and show the zero entrance here, because if you see my foot, there's about maybe an inch walking in. So I can walk right into the shower. It's nice and big. Um, I had a corner stool put there so that I could hold on to this wonderful grab bar that I'm going to tell you about and put my foot up there and wash it. The other reason here was to have two showers, one for myself, one for my husband so that he could help um, because my arms don't work so well so it's difficult to getting my hands to my head. So Dick comes in and helps me to wash. The tile floor we picked very carefully so that it would have some grip so that it wouldn't be slippery when wet. The walls are uh, have a little grip as well and are reinforced so that we can put more grab bars if we need them. At this point, we really only have two. Um, there is, here, this grab bar that we fell in love with came from Lowe's. It's called Safe Home. 
it's pretty. It doesn't look like the grab bars you see in airports. And it's good and sturdy, and I like it that I can get my whole hand around it. Uh, you also notice probably, Rick, if you'll turn around and shoot out, that we have a very large opening. There is no door, no need for the door. We had a wonderful plumber who did the tile so that they slope ever, ever, ever so uh, slightly. And so the water comes out of both of our uh, shower heads and goes immediately to the hole over in the, over the other end. Uh, the shower fixtures were also something else to be considered. Uh, we wanted a sh uh, something that I could bump with my hand if I needed to. I can still grip, but if I couldn't, I can bump and move it without having to grip it. So, and there's lots of light. That's another thing that we need. The sink. Let's look at the sink here for a minute. We chose a sink with a rear drain so that when these doors are open, they will slide right back and I can get a wheelchair in there. So there's no there's no um, nothing in the way here for the wheelchair. Also chose the handle for this is a happens to be a burly that comes up and down just with that I can bump it. I don't have to handle it. Uh, the height also you will notice is high. I'm five foot seven, and so I wanted something that I could be comfortable with. Uh, my husband is much higher because he's taller, so but that works for him as well. We, you also notice we have a lot of light. Here again, we both like light. We like to see, and um, that's important, knowing where you're feet are. Those of you who have IBM or one of the myositis know that we're very cautious about every step we take. Now, my commode. Um, <laughs> we call this my throne room. Uh, we chose a Toto toilet. The toilet uh, has a washer, dryer, front cleansing, rear cleansing. It's heated and um, I love my commode. But the big feature of my commode is the fact that we have raised it on a pedestal that is made out of the same granite that is used in the sink and the shower. This commode measures, because now here again I'm tall, measures 25 and a half inches from the floor to the seat. Uh, many of you have a raised seat and this one is really raised. So at this point, I don't need a grab bar yet, but we have reinforced these walls so that they can take a grab bar if we need. Big thanks to uh, Mary Jane there. As you um, all may know, the, uh, Mary Jane unfortunately is no longer with us. She has passed on, but thank you to the Delauders. Okay, for modifying your uh, your toilet, if you are looking to replace your toilet, you will want an elongated bowl. And what we're talking about there is the bowl itself. You'll want the longer overall shape rather than the uh, the shorter standard round bowl. Give you a little bit more to work with. Uh, the bidet, uh, those that have a bidet in, installed on top of their toilet seat, uh, many myositis patients just absolutely love them. Those of you who have uh, traveled to Japan, stayed in the hotels there, know um, how fancy the uh, the toilet seat can get with, uh, with heating and various uh, electric features, and they can be fantastic. Now, that is just one more thing to break, and it can be a little bit uh, more challenging with, with uh, hygiene to keep those clean. The standard height of a toilet is uh, 15 inches. If you buy an ADA height toilet, it's only adding another two to four inches, 17 to 19. Now you heard Mary Jane say that her toilet is 25 and a half inches high. You may, so you may want something much higher. 
um, how high you want to get, practice. Uh, just sit, uh, sit down in a chair, put some uh, various phone books, or uh, since phone books don't exist anymore, something else, to judge how high you want your, uh, your seating to be. So how high, uh, how do you get that extra height? Well, there's five basic approaches to adding to your toilet height. Starting there in the top left, you can see you can just buy a taller toilet, ADA height or taller. Just like Mary Jane shows, you, you showed, you can put a riser underneath the toilet. This uh, company, that's a particular brand making a toilevator, like an elevator, and uh, that's just a uh, product that you put underneath the toilet to raise it up, and you can buy those on Amazon. They're not very expensive. You can put an additional toilet seat cushion on top of the toilet, that extra cushion giving you extra height. One benefit there, if you have one that has uh, uh, handles just like in this picture, you can use those handles to push off on as long as the, uh, the cushion there is nice and secure. That picture, uh, the product there actually has a locking mechanism that can ostensibly lock to the uh, to seat to give you more uh, uh, stability. It, it can be diff more difficult to keep these uh, clean for hygiene purposes. Okay, in the top right, you can see that you can actually raise the toilet seat itself. Where, and that is a permanent installation um, where both the, the riser and that toilet seat are all bolted together, nice and secure. Also a little bit more difficult to keep clean for uh, hygiene. And then the bottom right, you do see a motorized lift. Myositis patients that have one of these motorized lift tend to just rave about them. They, they tend to just absolutely love them. And the technology has gotten pretty good today with various additional uh, features that you can add to those to, uh, to help you stand after using the toilet. Okay, now I'm going to show another uh, few set of uh, videos from a, a former TMA board member and IBM patient, Wayne Mortensen. We added a walk-in tub, which uh, has been very nice. It's a whirlpool, and it gives me the ability when I have fallen and my muscles are sore and hurting, I love to soak in that, and it really does help. And I, most of them are made so the door swings in. I searched to find this one, the door swings out, so I can roll up on the wheelchair and just scoot in, and uh, that's. Another feature I think that uh, you may look for as you're making decisions on what you have to do to deal with the problems that we have. And then on the sink, same thing, it's made so uh, the wheelchair can roll up to the sink. The shower is set up so I can also wheel the wheelchair into it, up to it. I don't have it set up right now for with a stationary chair in the shower it hasn't been necessary but uh, and i don't really use the wheelchair but as a precaution my wife thought we needed it so we have it frankly i have yet to use it so there's the idea though as we roll up and can roll into the uh, walk-in roll in shower it's plenty big and then i also exercise in here we have this bench made that uh, I can sit on it and do leg lifts and use my kettlebell when I step out in the middle of that shower. So, when we got these closets made, we had them uh, put in with the racks that come down to the level of the wheelchair. I'll show you how that makes it very convenient to uh, select a suit or a jacket or whatever. And each one of these are set up this way. And even then it's at my level, so it works well. Big thanks to Wayne for, uh, for doing that. All right, so you say, Chris, I love it. I want it all, but I can't afford it. How do I, uh, how do I pay for all this? Can I get help? And today is your lucky day because I have a ton of resources that uh, can help you. First of all, if you are a veteran and you are not connected to the VA for some reason, your very first call tomorrow morning should be to a, a veteran service organization for free, and they can help you interact with the, the, the VA. 
You do not have to be retired from the military. You do not have to be service connected. My father was also an Air Force pilot, uh, did not retire, no service connection for his disease, and the VA was still very helpful uh, providing his power chair uh, and uh, other items when he was later in life. The VA uh, can be very helpful. For everyone there in the bottom left, I do recommend uh, this website, homemods.org. It's associated with the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. And uh, I know nothing about the school. I have no idea if it's uh, any good or not. But uh, that website and the resources on it um, for gerontology being the study of aging, just absolutely fantastic uh, for uh, anyone that's getting old, but particularly those of us with a disease. Specifically, go to that link that I, I mentioned there, the Home Modification Network. And if you click on that <clears throat> for the American patients here, if you uh, click on the link for you from your state, uh, it's just amazing the resources that will come up. So I, I just clicked on Alaska, and without exaggeration, it brought up 10 pages of resources to, uh, for me to check uh, and uh, places that I can go to uh, get help with, with funding for modifications. And it has lots of other resources there for uh, the care partners and uh, other aging um, issues. <clears throat> now, our friends at Myositis Support and Understanding, MSU, uh, great people, and uh, they provide up to $1,500 of assistance to myositis patients that, uh, that are in need. There's the website there that you can go to for more information. Go check your local MDA clinic. They do give out equipment, Medicare, Medicaid. Look into your life and health insurance policies that you have. I myself have uh, one type of health insurance policy that does have a clause in it that uh, they will provide claims for equipment. So I will be tapping into that for myself. And then the bottom link, the uh, housing and urban development uh, organization from the government. If you just put your state in that uh, link there at the end, um, there's lots of uh, other lists of resources you, you might have available in your state. The AARP does not provide grants directly to uh, individuals, but they give grants to organizations. And if you go check the, the, uh, those organizations that are listed on the AARP website, then you might be able to get funding from those other organizations. Your state may provide a tax credit for home modifications. And there are lots of federal, state, local community, and private nonprofit organizations out there that do give uh, assistance. As an example, me in Alaska. So I went to this company that you see on the, uh, the right side of the screen. There's only one company in all of Alaska that does elevators and, uh, and stair lifts. I went to them and they gave me this list that's not really going to be helpful to everyone else, but it just shows an example that from this one company, a list of 12 organizations that uh, may provide resources. Now, these various lists that you go to, not everyone is going to apply to you. Not every, you're not going to be able to use each, uh, every single one of them. Some are income based, needs based, some are not. But the point is, there is a ton of resources out there there. If you just spend some time on the internet and you look, if you just do a little bit of uh, uh, footwork around your community and your local governments to find out what is available to you, there is a lot out there. Now, one that I don't necessarily recommend, but I will uh, mention the um, for the Americans here, the CARES Act that was uh, passed by Congress and President Trump does have a provision in it that if you have been negatively affected by COVID, whether you yourself got sick, you had a job loss, had less income this year or whatever, you do have the ability to tap into your own retirement funds uh, for early withdrawals uh, and whatnot without the usual penalties. Now, the what you take can be taxable unless it's coming from a Roth IRA or something that is a uh, something that is growing untaxed. Um, but you can spread out that taxable income over three years if you so choose. You can also repay the, your money into your own retirement fund and turn it then into a uh, a loan versus a early withdrawal. 
Uh, now, there are stipulations with all this. I do recommend that you contact a, a, a tax or investment advisor if you're thinking about uh, uh, doing this um, because you are uh, possibly taking money from yourself and uh, your own retirement fund. This is not free money. Okay, here's some, some additional resources that you can look at later, um, including that cool little video about a, uh, uh, a way to uh, close the door if uh, you're having difficulty. So, I have some drinks in the fridge. Everybody uh, grab some and let's go tour my house. Yes, I believe so. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think so you get to go. Okay, well, hello everyone. Welcome to my house. Uh, I think you all thought that I lived in a igloo here in Alaska. But uh, nope, us uh, so Alaskans actually, guess what? We actually do have real houses. Um, so uh, an approach that I chose to take during, uh, especially during COVID here, um, my, my perspective that, that I'm taking with my home is, you know what? If things like COVID and I'm gonna be locked down in my home, if with this disease, I'm gonna be more homebound than, uh, than before, is I want to make my home, I wanna invest in my home. And that is a priority for me to make my home a sanctuary, a nice place to live. If I'm gonna be spending a lot of time here, I want it to be nice and functional for me. So that's a uh, approach that I took. Okay, we're gonna start a uh, uh, walk through my, uh, my home here. We are uh, uh, kind of middle, in the middle of a remodel project. Uh, unfortunately, we have had problems with uh, contractor and pacing. Go figure, anyone that uh, has used a contractor, you know how that goes. So I would love to be able to show you a finished product of everything that we've done, but uh, some of them are in the middle states and other things I'll have to show you, the challenges that I'm facing and what we will be doing uh, to, to eliminate those challenges. I'm gonna start here in my, my living room. And the first thing for me to point out is the, uh, these floors. So as I talked about uh, replacing flooring with uh, hard flooring, that's something we've chosen to do previously. Um, this was uh, all carpet. I'm kind of show you an example of the, uh, the carpet that we're replacing. If you look there in the, uh, the entryway to my office there, you see just a little bit of the, uh, the carpet that uh, uh, has not been replaced yet. Because here in Alaska, as I mentioned, um, I have in-floor radiant heat. So the going to this tile, it's a wood look tile that I chose to go with. Got a fantastic deal on it at uh, Lowe's on clearance. Uh, I mean, it was like $1 a square foot, which is just fantastic. And then I have a buddy that's helping me installing it. So I'm saving lots of uh, money by, by going that way. You can find workarounds uh, like that too. Yes, you do still see rugs in my house. No, I am not a hypocrite. So as I uh, get a little bit further progressed, yes, uh, these rugs will be coming out. The next thing that I wanna point out is these, uh, these stairs here. So in my whole house, these are the only stairs that I have to deal with other than the main staircase. So you've got two steps down here into the living room. So these are standard height stairs, those seven and a half uh, inch stairs like I talked about. So a total of 15 inches of stairs. As such, what I'm planning to do here is to put in portable ramps that are 15 feet long. Now that's pretty long and that is gonna go out into like the, uh, the middle of the living room there. But I do have room to work with, gonna move around the couch when those are, uh, are installed. Now, because I'm still upright at this point, I'm not gonna put in ramps quite yet. And when we get to that point, I'll be able to remove them when I don't want them here. When I need them, I'll put them in. And being portable, I'll be able to take them with me when I travel if I need them uh, out and about. The next thing that I want to point out is this railing. And it sounds silly, but this is actually one of the modifications that I love the, uh, the most uh, so far. And the reason I like it, this was not there uh, originally. And uh, my buddy, what all this is, is uh, this is just a piece of standard handrail from Home Depot standard railing brackets and about a uh, total of maybe one hour of, uh, of labor of cutting a, of the handrail, staining the handrail and installing it hour, hour and a half. And um, if I didn't tell you that this was an add-on modification, you probably wouldn't have ever known. It looks like it, it, uh, it, it, uh, it belongs there. So it's not a real ugly industrial hospital grade uh, um, grab bar 
that I, I stuck to the wall. This is the kind of thing that I am choosing to do with my own home. And whatever you do is great. Now, the reason I'm putting this in is that I have lost the ability to do stairs unassisted. Uh, I have to use my hands. And so let me just show you to get up. This helps me that I can actually do the stairs here and it keeps my home, I can still access this room without having to do ramps yet. Uh, and so I love it. Okay, so uh, let me uh, take you over here and next gonna show you the other stairs in my home. This is our main staircase. And you can see this particular uh, staircase that we have is a, a curved staircase. I love it, it's nice and, uh, and pretty. Now, uh, so for me to access the, uh, the lower level, um, I have considered putting in a stair lift. Yes, like I talked about, you can put a stair lift on uh, curved stairs. Now I'm choosing not to do that. One of the reasons is because I have hereditary IBM with a steady progression, unless something changes, I will eventually be in a power chair. And at some point I will lose the ability to transfer from the power chair to the stair lift. And then when the stair lift goes down, transfer out of the stair lift to another power chair uh, downstairs. So uh, I still could do a stair lift and then just choose that when I get to that point, I just no longer go downstairs. Yeah, okay, that's a possibility, but I instead I'm gonna do something different and I'll show you uh, what I'm gonna do there. Let's go look at the kitchen. I feel like uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Okay, so there's a few things that are not necessarily designed for uh, home accessibility, but uh, just show you some solutions. You decide if it's something that would be helpful for you. As you can see, I've got a, a double oven here. The lower oven, this might be something that could be accessible to someone in a, uh, a wheelchair. Now this particular model probably would not work for you because as you can see, the controls are up at the top and somebody in a chair would not be able to reach those. But if you bought a model with con controls down here, that might be something helpful for you. Okay, next let's come over and uh, show you uh, our dishwashers. So we actually have pull out drawers for, uh, for dishwashers. These are made by Fisher and Pakel. You decide if this was something that would be a little bit more accessible for you rather than the standard dish dishwasher with the, uh, the, the pull out um, the pull down door. Okay, the next thing is I come over here. Uh, we have a, a trash compactor that uh, down here at the, the bottom is you just step on it and it opens up to throw away trash. Uh, also, you could get a trash can that does have the, the step-on feature that opens up the, uh, the trash can. That might be something that works for you. Okay, let me show you the cooktop stove here. Again, this was not designed for accessibility, but this could be very well accessible. This is an electric uh, countertop stove, and the reason I mentioned that is if you look down here at the cabinet doors, there's actually nothing underneath the stove. So just like Mary Jane showed with her vanity, if you wanted to, this could be very easily modified with the cabinet doors so that somebody with a uh, wheelchair could actually roll under the stove if they wanted to keep cooking on their uh, cooktop. Now, uh, something like this with the uh, exhaust fan actually pops up from the, uh, the back there, kind of like a RoboCop or something there, and the exhaust fan goes like that. Okay, the next thing to, to talk about here is uh, uh, counters. And if you want to modify your home or, and specifically your kitchen, for you to be able to use it, whether you're uh, in a scooter or a power chair, more power to you. I will warn you, these kind of modifications with kitchen cabinets and countertops can get very, very expensive. Now, I actually don't do a lot of cooking, so we're choosing not to modify the, uh, the cabinets and um, the countertops have uh, already, like literally just been replaced yesterday. Um, now, I'm a taller guy, I'm about six foot three. And one of the uh, major places of weakness, the primary place, place of weakness that I have in my body is actually my lower back. I have a problem leaning forward over anything, over a sink or a countertop, unless, I prop myself up with a cane, or I hold myself up like, like this, stiff arming off the counter. So I'm trying to get better at barbecue. And I can't really barbecue and prepare a brisket with me doing this. And you can see my, my hands are barely reaching the countertop here because I'm a taller person. 
So <clears throat> one solution that I'm doing so far, you can see I've got a couple of boxes here that are stacked on top of each other to raise up a work, um, a workplace, a work uh, top, that uh, this is my barbecue cutting board. And I, now I can prepare a brisket here and it, I, it can easily access, uh, access it without having to strain my back and, uh, and, and, and that kind of thing. Now, uh, these are just boxes, but what, what something I'd like to do is get like an acrylic stand that would raise the countertop height without having to actually uh, get an adjustable height uh, countertop. Something else to consider is this, uh, this walker. And so I know all of you are uh, familiar with, with uh, the walker, but, and I don't quite need this quite yet, but it is in my future, which is why I have one. So if I lock the, uh, the, the wheels there and I turn around, now the, the seat function of the walker that those of you that use them are very familiar with, and the seat function, you can sit down on the seat and now my countertop is very accessible to me, even as a uh, big tall guy. I can do that just using this as a, uh, like a stool. Okay, now, everybody say hi to my daughter, Abigail. She's the one that's uh, the cameraman today. She's been doing a great job. Okay, so um, refrigerator. I am loving that we have a side-by-side uh, -side here uh, refrigerator. And the reason is, again, I have lower back issues. So if it was an over-under, like uh, we, we have, then I would have to bend over here to, to get to something at the, uh, the lower level. With a side-by-side, -side, I can put anything that I need in the refrigerator at my height, the things that I need the most, very readily accessible to me. Likewise, on the freezer, I can put things at my height. I don't have to uh, go reach up or bend over to access the things that I need most. We can put those at uh, my height here in the, uh, the countertops. Okay, now let's go over and let's look at some lifts. So first, Abby, if you stay there for just a second, pan down here on the floor, you can see these floors that we're replacing, the little lip right here. Now, and it's not just in doorways that you have this. Sometimes you do have a little lip on the floor, and that's the kind of thing that uh, you have to work with sometimes. Now, uh, this is the door to our garage. Uh, first thing to, to point out here, this is a 36 inch wide door, wider than the, uh, the standard interior door, which are usually 30 inches. So 36 inches is what you will want for accessibility. And if you're in a, a power chair, that extra width is what you'll want for access. And what I'm showing you here in the garage, is that there is a little stair here. And uh, this is very common in houses, transitioning from the house to the garage, that there be a stair. This particular stair is, uh, step is only four inches high, not much, but still a problem for uh, people with uh, accessibility issues. So what we're doing here, and I wish it was done that I could show you, but the contractors are gonna build a landing out here. So the landing is going to be uh, five feet square here, which is the uh, ADA standard for a landing. So when I'm in a chair, I'm going to roll through the door out here to a landing, turn 90 degrees, and then go out the main door of the garage there at a four foot long ramp to counter the four inch high stairs. Also, you see that down here, there's that little lip at the, uh, at the bottom. There's that threshold. So we're gonna install on this side, that little mini rubber ramp, like I showed in the PowerPoint video. That way, when I'm in the chair, I can roll up that little ramp and over that threshold, instead of having this huge bump and a tripping hazard when, uh, while I'm still walking. Okay, let's go over to the master bedroom and the uh, master bathroom. going here, the next thing I want to uh, point out is the door handles. So you can see here currently in the house the kind of door handles that I have, the round knob. And it's getting a little bit more difficult for me. It's so frustrating. I grab the knob and I turn and it's not enough and the door doesn't open. So I'm transitioning to this kind of door handle, the, uh, the door lever. And I don't have to have the grip strength I can just push on it with my hand. Let me hold it there. There you go. You push on it with my hand, slap at it, 
and uh, it'll open the door that way. Okay, coming into the, uh, the bedroom here, this is another door that will be widened to 36 inches. Currently, this is only a standard width of 30 inches. As we go into the master bed and then straight into the master bath, this is another door that has to be widened to 36 inches. These are uh, critical doors to the master bedroom, the master bathroom, and then if you have a separate little toilet room, uh, you'll want to uh, widen that also to 36 inches. All right, so come on into the bathroom here. First thing with the, uh, the bathroom is that if you're in a power chair, you're gonna need a lot of room to mandating that I have certain things done to the house in order them to help me with, uh, with, uh, with funding a little bit. So they mandate that I have at least a four foot turning radius here. Now here in this bathroom, I've already got that, thank God, and so I don't have a lot of modifications for that myself. Let's go look at the shower. That's the next biggest thing. Okay, so the shower, I got a, uh, a walk-in shower. Now the biggest thing here is going to be the end. This is the, uh, the shower, very common for showers, and I'm gonna have to eliminate that. So that's gonna be taken out and made into a roll-in shower with a barrierless entry. The door here needs to also be 36 inches wide. Thankfully, uh, from right here to right here, guess what? It just happens to be 36 inches. So for the, our modifications, what we're gonna do, take out this door and this next glass piece uh, so that we have a 36 inch wide opening. And then we can either put in a new door that's 36 inches wide or just leave it with a zero door just like uh, Mary Jane showed for hers. The next thing for the shower, you can see I've already got the shower wands and that's great. I'm just going to choose to spruce up the, uh, the shower a little bit more by putting the kind of fixtures in that have multiple shower heads along the wall and a ceiling waterfall that comes down from the ceiling. That's going to make it a little bit easier to get water all over this big body of mine um, uh, in addition to using the shower wand. Yes, I will be installing a stool in the, uh, the corner or a uh, shower chair. And the VA also mandates that uh, I have to put in grab bars on each wall of the shower. So we're going to be putting in four of those. And of course, you know, not just that the VA, well, the VA says I have to, but these are good ideas. Okay, last thing here in the bathroom, which is pretty good and I won't have to modify too much, is that vanity. So eventually I'll be doing exactly what Mary Jane showed. I love that in just modifying the cabinets. So you have the cabinet doors when they're closed, they look normal. Then when they open and you can slide them back, then it becomes accessible to someone that's in a chair. Now I'm not gonna do that now because I'm not in a chair now. Um, and yes, I tell you to work ahead, but hopefully I'm still a few years away from being full on in a chair. And I don't know yet what model of chair I'm gonna have, what height I'm gonna have. Am I going to be in an adjustable height chair? What's gonna be the technology of, uh, of chairs at that time? So if I were to modify this now and lower the countertop to be at uh, um, handicap or uh, a chair height, because I have a back weakness, it would be even more difficult for me to use my sink in the meantime which is completely counterintuitive to the whole purpose of doing home modifications. So I'm gonna hold off on that until I'm just a little bit closer to, to being in a chair. All right, let's finish up here in the master bedroom. And the only thing that I'm going to show you here is that yes, I am choosing to put in an elevator. Now, with the, uh, the elevator, uh, we went through the whole house with a home, uh, the elevator designer, and we were not able to find a uh, place that was uh, a, we were able to put an elevator inside the home. So uh, we were actually going to uh, add on an elevator on the exterior of the home. This is an exterior wall of the uh, of the house, and this is actually the only place that I could find in the house to add on an elevator. I don't want it to be accessible for the master bed, but 
for me, that, that's just the, the way it is. So the elevator access door is actually going to be here, and we are on the upper floor. We're going to have to punch through the ex exterior wall and then roll into that elevator. That elevator will go down to the lower level, and then the egress from the uh, elevator on the lower level is going to be uh, into a bonus room. Okay, so that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the computer here. I'm going to sit down, and we're going to do some Q&A. Watch your eyes, everybody. I'm going to swap around my video camera so that you can see me front-facing. There we go. And, Lori, since I've been uh, walking for a while, um, I have not seen any Q&As that have popped up. Uh, everybody, please do um, send me my Q and your Q&As there. If there's anything that you'd like me to, to, to if you'd like to see more of in the house, then um, I'm happy to uh, pick up and we can walk through and see anything else. So, Lori, uh, if you could uh, just start me off with uh, um, any questions. Hey there, Chris. Thanks for that uh, fantastic tour of the house and uh, some great ideas to keep in mind um, as people are, you know, moving forward. Um, so you guys, just a quick reminder, uh, we're hearing a lot of like really well done, great ideas that are shared. Are there any questions that you'd like uh, Chris to be able to address at this time? Go ahead and pop it in either question Q&A or the chat and I'm happy to get to it. <laughs> I see Randy says, I need um, more food in the fridge. Yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, as I said, we're in the middle of a remodel and uh, the, the, that main fridge actually went out. And so I just got that fixed literally like uh, three days ago. And we are uh, currently repopulating the, uh, uh, the fridge, as you can see. Yep, I, I, I get uh, plenty of food. So that's, that's not, <laughs> you don't have to worry about uh, Chris starving in Alaska. So Chris, there's a question here about how do they contact the VA uh, in regards to home modification? Okay, yeah, so uh, again, if you are a veteran, your number one stop, you gotta go to that VSO, the Veteran Service Organization. That VSO will be your conduit to uh, get in contact with uh, the VA. Uh, the VA, <clears throat> their home modification program, a lot of it is run through their prosthetics office uh, the VSO will walk you through that. Now, I do have to emphasize that not everybody is uh, eligible for the full-on grant. There's different uh, levels of the uh, home grant for, for veterans, and it all depends on uh, your particular uh, rating and uh, your condition and what the, uh, uh, the VA recognizes um, as to the, the level of, uh, of funding that uh, you can get, uh, get, can get from them. Uh, if you have any, uh, uh, sorry, any doubts about how to uh, contact a VSO, just Google Veteran Service Organization and uh, it will bring up lists. There's probably, I'm going to guess, 20 to two dozen uh, VSOs that are available to you and they, uh, and they are completely free. They work for you. Fantastic. Um, a question's come up regarding the kind of elevator. Um, the, the question wanted to know, is it chain driven, cable or hydraulic piston that you're going to be installing? Great, and that is uh, all three of those are uh, available and actually even, even more uh, options. Um, so uh, me personally, uh, we are putting in a, uh, let's see, it is cable driven with a, a motor. And the, uh, the, the elevator that uh, we're putting in does not require a separate elevator equipment room, thank goodness. So the, uh, the motor for the elevator actually goes on top of the elevator and then pulls uh, the elevator up and down. Um, but yes, I did look at um, actually a pneumatic option, pneumatic, in that it's driven by air. And it's pretty cool. It looks like something out of Star Trek. It's this big clear tube and it uses air to push the uh, person up and, uh, and down. Um, I thought about doing that. You saw my curved uh, staircase. I thought about putting one of those in the middle of the staircase. I chose not to uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One being as, uh, aesthetics, uh, just to be honest. Good question. Um, and another question, just kind of thinking about taking all of these options, you know, into, into consideration and trying to budget accordingly. Do you have an approximate range uh, budget wise that you're looking with all of the different changes that you're making in your house that you've shared with us today? 
you, that you mind don't, that you don't mind sharing? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm a little hesitant to uh, to talk costs. First of all, I uh, you know I, I want to be very cognizant of uh, uh, those people that are on a fixed budget and uh, just aren't able to to do the uh, the same things. Uh, as I I really want to stay humble uh, about that. As well, do keep in mind I'm in Alaska and everything up here costs more. As I said, there's only one Alaska elevator company, so guess what? They get to choose what prices they want, and you don't have anybody else to go to. So it is kind of uh, expensive. I will say that uh, I am in the, um, uh, how about this? I'm over the uh, uh, $100,000 mark, but um, that uh, before you just go, oh my goodness, he's made of money. No, <laughs> the VA is helping out here as well as various other funding sources. You can do the same thing. If you are able to hit every one of those funding sources and take a little bit of, of, of money, uh, help, assistance from all these different, you can very easily uh, fund uh, your project. Um, I did see somebody <clears throat> pop up and ask where I live in Alaska. I'm uh, just north of, uh, of Anchorage. Excellent. I see um, another question here. That, yeah, that somebody says, uh, what about the garage and mobility for transportation? Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, that is absolutely a uh, issue. So uh, currently I have a two car attached garage and it's nice and I could make that work. Um, as part of my project, I am actually also adding a detached garage and that's something that my father did too is uh, with that because if eventually you do get a, uh, a, a wheelchair accessible van, then that requires extra uh, entrance clearance just to, to enter the van and whatnot. And uh, particularly if you happen to live in some way way up north, I don't know where, that might get a lot of snow and that kind of thing, then yeah, you want to have that kind of ability to uh, access things indoors as much as possible without having to go outside. Uh, Miss Diane had just shared too, just to let everyone know that she was able to get a medical expense reduction for her house remodel for handicap purposes on her federal taxes. It gave her about $20,000 rebate per se on the model, on the remodel. So just wanted to share that out with everyone. And um, you are my hero. You are uh, <laughs> walking the talk. I like it. Thank you. She's on it. So a question comes from Miss Jane. Where do you find those small rubber threshold ramps? Okay, yeah, so, uh, oh boy, that's a, a good question as far as the exact website. I'm sorry that I'm not remembering the exact website, but I did find them online. A lot of these products, if you just Google them, you, uh, so for that, what I would do, I'm just going to, when I look for that, I'm just going to Google, uh, let's see, rubber threshold wheelchair ramp, something like that. And I, I, I bet you that just within probably 60 seconds of uh, searching the internet, you're probably going to find something. Uh, those links that I put in at the end of my video, a lot of those have access to products like that. And I don't know if that specific one is listed on there. And then the, um, uh, the link there of, uh, what was it, homemods.org, uh, associated with the, uh, that School of Gerontology in uh, California. They also have a link to uh, a lot of resources, a lot of products like that. So uh, uh, that, that should be easily findable. Excellent. Karen has a question. She wants to know, she says she has a receding fan like you do over her stove. However, the button is hard for her to press. Do you have any ideas or suggestions? Ooh, good question. Um, okay, so a couple ways that we could uh, address that. First, we could address trying to get some sort of assistance to actually press the uh, the button, some sort of little tool, a little poker. And uh, oh, I thought, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry, I left my little grabber, grabbing tool in the, um, in the, uh, the kitchen. Um, so uh, you, can, you can try to get something like that, a little poker that can uh, poke the, uh, the button. The other approach that you could take, and this is what I would recommend if you can uh, fit it into your budget, find somebody that could do that for you, is to modify the actual button. So if you can get a uh, electrician, somebody that would be willing to open up that, uh, that button and make a new contact, with parts from uh, Radio Shack to, to make that electrical connection, 
do something that instead of it being hard to reach, hard to press, that it becomes an easier button. You could even, um, you could even uh, wire it up to a button like you see at, uh, what's that company, Staples, the big red button that you, you smash. Uh, that, that is possible. That, that kind of thing can happen. And if you uh, co uh, contact a, a local contractor, uh, someone with uh, electrical experience, and a lot of contractors do even bill themselves as being uh, handicapped accessible and, and friendly and knowledgeable in doing those modifications, somebody very easily might be able to do that for you. Fantastic. Um, Camille, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Ronald, he wanted to know, do you happen to know the maker of the walker you showed? He's tall like you and he's had trouble finding a tall enough one. Yeah, that one was actually provided by the VA. The, uh, the brand of that particular one, again, no uh, um, uh, sponsorship here, is, was uh, Dolomite. Uh, I think it's D-O-L-O-M-I-T-E. Uh, if I remember right. Um, and um, now on that one, um, I actually had to have the, the VA sent me also extendable handles because I am tall, because when I put it together for me to grab the handles, I actually have to hunch over a little bit, which of course defeats the purpose of being, <laughs> being handicapped uh, accessible. So uh, I have uh, received extendable handles that will uh, come up to my height. What I've learned is for a, a walker, when you use that, when your arms are straight, uh, hanging down at your side, you want the handle to be right here at the, uh, the wrist. That way, when you're using it, your arms have a, a slight break to them, slight bend in the, uh, the elbow. You do not want to be leaning over. You don't want to be straining to reach that, that handle because it's going to compromise your control of the walker. Uh, I see a couple people, uh, they're throwing in here uh, about the, uh, the, the ramp. So somebody said they bought their little uh, rubber ramp on Amazon. Doesn't surprise me. Everything is uh, uh, available on Amazon nowadays. And something that uh, Dave is about to, uh, to mention, Dave Mulkel here in our closing session, please, for everybody, anytime you buy something on Amazon, please go to smile.amazon.com. Once again, that is smile.amazon.com. The first time you go there, um, it will ask you, what charity do you want us to donate to every time you make a purchase? All you have to do is just designate that you want your money to go to the Myositis Association. Then every time thereafter, when you make a purchase at no expense to you, Amazon will donate to the Myositis Association. One more time, that is smile dot amazon.com just add a smile to the beginning of it and you can help uh um tma while you shop while you're buying all this great stuff that we're looking at all right sorry Lord. Go back to you. Um, i'm combining two questions here it's kind of two part from two different people but it both both regard the elevator um could you explain a little more about the elevator so for example uh you're taking the wall out and it going to come downstairs into a large room is that correct and then the second part to that is um, being in an area where it could get very cold do you, are you concerned at all about the elevator being on an exterior wall living in Alaska yeah great questions and you know what I asked the same thing of the elevator company when uh, I, I talked to them and elevator companies are very very experienced in uh, doing this so your first question um, there's lots of different solutions that you can do in your home. You saw the Werfels, the video that I showed uh, earlier, that their, uh, their elevator is actually interior to the, to the home, and it just goes through the, uh, the floor from one room to a, another without having a, uh, a fully enclosed uh, shaftway. Now, mine being an exterior, I asked the elevator company about that, and they said, no problem, it will just have to be uh, maintained uh, to be within a certain uh, heat range. And uh, yes, here in Alaska, um, uh, so it being attached to the home, it's going to draw enough heat from the home to stay heated. Uh, so I asked if I have to put a, uh, a heater inside to keep it heated, and uh, they said no, that it should be fine. Um, and then as far as accessing the room, uh, yes, when it goes downstairs, uh, below the room that I am in now, there's like a, a a bonus room kind of a larger area and so uh, there will be a uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it okay there will be an opening in that 
uh, one of the walls there in the bonus room. So when I roll out the bottom of the, uh, the elevator, uh, I'll be rolling into the, uh, the bonus room. You can get various configurations of your elevator. You can do the standard one door, where if you roll in this way, you have to come out the, uh, the same wall. So for a person in a uh, wheelchair, that means you'd probably have to back up out of the elevator, and that's just real life. That, uh, and, and you use commercial elevators, and often people have to do that. You roll straight in, and you have to back out. Now, my particular situation actually works out pretty nice because um, it's actually going to be a two-door elevator. Here, we're going to roll in the elevator this way upstairs, and then once it goes down to the lower level, you actually, the other wall is going to open up right in front of you and you're going to roll out the elevator downstairs so it's a straight pass through and uh, you won't, won't have to back up if you're in a, uh, in a chair. Great. Um, Miss Sonia wanted to know, are there any modification suggestions for threshold slash lip area for sliding glass doors from a family room onto a deck? She currently uses a roller turn now but do need to step over the threshold. Yeah, I'd, I'd go straight to that uh, solution that we showed earlier, the uh, the mini rubber threshold ramp. That is probably going to be your best solution. But you can make those little mini ramps out of anything. So you can make it out of uh, wood, and you can choose to nail it down so it's permanently uh, affixed to, to your floor. And you can do that on the outside as well on your deck. Um, I thought about putting this in my uh, video. There's actually a grandmother in Germany that makes little wheelchair ramps out of Lego bricks. And I'm a Lego fan, so I absolutely love that she does that. Um, and she puts them all around her community into businesses. And then it stimulates conversations about uh, accessibility. So that's what I would say about for the uh, sliding glass door is same thing that uh, a little ramp. Now, uh, what you might be referencing is uh, on the sliding glass door, you have the track. That the, uh, that the door slides in. And so going over that track, when the, uh, when the sliding glass door is open, there's gonna be that little indentation to go through. And I don't have a good solution for you there because if you fill in the track, the sliding glass door is not able to stop, uh, to, to close. So you would actually have to change your actual door in order to get rid of that little divot. And yes, you can find those out there where you can close uh, some sort of door without having the indentation down lower. But uh, 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 as far as I know, uh, I think it, it would require you to replace the actual sliding glass door assembly itself to do that. Fantastic. Um, we do have a question in here. Uh, someone really enjoyed the video with the step in tub from Wayne. So uh, you will be able to access that as this session is being recorded, when you go to the agenda um, after today, you can go to the agenda and click on any of the sessions that were provided during this conference, and you'll see that there's recorded video there of the presentations. In addition, there's a video link on the left-hand side in the main navigation that has additional um, webinars and educational sessions that have been recorded over the past you know, couple years that have been very helpful for the MySidus community. So hopefully that will help you out. Um, what Thanks, about, Lori. no problem. Do you have any, um, uh, enhancements on the outside of your home? Um, <clears throat> so currently right now, let me think, um, no, I don't. So, um, uh, and I meant to mention that with my garage, uh, because I'm, I'm choosing to, I, I'm really trying to keep my home, uh, looking nice and not shouting handicapped. I'm choosing instead of the three stairs that I have on my front porch, instead of putting one of those big long ramps on the front porch, that's why I'm choosing to do the egress from the upstairs through the garage and having a little solution instead of a very big solution that uh, is, is somewhat unsightly. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to he uh, Laura here as far as uh, how much longer that we go. Um, well, we are gonna wrap up. One thing that I do wanna say to everybody, just putting on my hat for a second, with uh, being the uh, administrator of TMA right now. Uh, we hear you on everything that uh, uh, the uh, issues if you've had with, uh, with audio and video uh, throughout uh, this conference. And um, my pledge to you is we're just gonna make this better. 
we're only getting started in this virtual world. Now we're not giving up of being in person. So if COVID allows and everything goes right, what we may do in the future is one virtual event uh, a, a year with our virtual summit in like a Myositis Awareness Month in May, and then one in-person conference uh, this time of year, which uh, yes, next year is in uh, uh, Seattle since that got uh, uh, delayed from uh, today. So I want to assure you, we're gonna keep working on this and getting, getting it better. It's uh, challenging because there are 600 devices out there of various attendees, 600 uh, internet connections with people, 600 to 1,000 cameras and microphones. And uh, I, I, we can't be a tech support for all of them, but that doesn't mean we're giving up on you. We're gonna just make this better. Lori? Over to you. Perfect. I'd really like to get to two more questions real quick and then we'll sure. officially wrap up. Um, one of them is in regards to your thoughts on benches in the showers. Uh, Camille has heard a lot of pros and cons and so do you have any insight into that? Okay, my personal feel about that is that if you are uh, in a chair and you're using a shower chair, then uh, you probably don't need to, to be using them. So I, I approach this from the standpoint of do I need it? If you're not in a chair, I would say yes, uh, put it in there and put it in the corner, make sure it is stable and that it's not going to slip and slide on you because showers can get kind of greasy and grimy and things can slide around on you with, uh, with uh, soap and um, spores that can, uh, can grow in there. So a uh, uh, challenge is to keep your showers clean and to do that, yes, I would definitely advocate. Matter of fact, as I mentioned, the VA actually mandates that I have to have a uh, shower in, the, I'm sorry, a chair in the shower or some sort of bench. And I intend to just build one into the corner um, in order for me to uh, receive VA assistance. Fantastic. And the last one, um, do you have any information on installing hand controls in a car? And we're talking home, but this was uh, a, a question out there. And if not you, no then problem. people can post it in the chat too. Yeah, so I'm happy to, uh, to answer that. Um, so uh, yes, that is definitely possible. Now, in order for that to happen, you have to go to a specialized company that does accessibility modifications to, you, to your vehicle. Um, and they're, they're out there all around the country. Um, just Google that and uh, you can come up with a company near you that's able to do that. My father did do that uh, with his van and that allows uh, any uh, disabled person to maintain just a little bit more independence of and maintain your, uh, your driving. And that uh, can be a pride thing and I, I totally get it. I will just caution you though, please keep an eye on yourself and have your, listen to your family because uh, there will be a time where it is you're going to lose the dexterity to even mo uh, operate those controls and it becomes a safety issue. Listen to your family and, and your doctors when they're telling you. And if they say, Bob, you need to stop driving, listen, 